We have our next guest ready to come on now. Christian, good to see you. Co-founder of Super Evil Megacorp. Correct? Yeah, Chief Operating Officer, Executive Director. Haven't yet been promoted to co-founder, but oh, maybe one okay, day. Oh, okay, okay. Well, sorry, I got that wrong. Uh, but uh, congratulations on your presence here at Twitch and everything going on with you all, trying to shape a new landscape in the world of mobile. So uh, let everybody hear what Vainglory is all about. So Vainglory is a 3v3 competitive multiplayer online ballerina MOBA on touch screens. So we ourselves grew up with PC gaming as the thing that we did at night, like all night long with friends. Right. And so I personally grew up with titles like Warcraft 3 or Unreal Tournament. And we really love that style of gaming, uh, especially with friends like you like over your PC to your friend's house and you, know, you, just, you play all night. We feel like the touch screen generation deserves that gaming experience. So what we really set out to do now, like we're three years into it, is to create those types of experiences, the kind of experiences you expect to have on a PC but only your touch screen. The hardware has been capable of doing that for a little while, yeah. but we are really excited to actually be writing some of the software that hopefully, ultimately, will create an era where players will consider their touch screens their primary gaming platform. Because you know what, you can play with it anywhere, not just when you're in front of your PC. Yeah, absolutely. Now, And that's been a tough nut to crack for a lot of people, so tell us what you're doing differently and what we should be excited about, because the touch interface is, at the same time, limited as it is limitless. So uh, what are your thoughts in that space and how do they actually apply to the gameplay? Yeah, so we are paranoid about control. Like as gamers ourselves, we, wanna, we want, don't want to even think about what device we're playing on. We actually think as gamers, we don't really care fundamentally what device we're playing on, if it's a Game Boy Advance or if it's, a, you know, if it's a good game, it's a good game, regardless of the platform. But for touch screens, like you're ex exactly right, the really important things there are both the control responsiveness, so that sense that you don't even think about how you're controlling your hero, right. but rather you're just doing it, you're battling your opponent, not the device. And so we've worked long and hard on our technology engine that enables us to have always sub 30 millisecond control inputs where we can, where sort of, when you think about doing something, you're already doing, it's already happening on screen. I see. And really focusing on the controls, the graphics, the overall sense of responsiveness of the game has been a, a, really, uh, a really important part of what we're creating. At the end of the day, we're a team from companies like Blizzard, Rockstar, Insomniac, and so on, and we just hold ourselves responsible for trying to create something that's really worthy yeah. of core gamers' attention. It's something that we would want to play ourselves. Yeah, absolutely, and that's what you're saying. You know, the core gaming experience is reactive. You know, you, you play a game, you take that initial time to kind of learn. But as much as the core gaming experience is reactive, the mobile gaming experience has traditionally been very intuitive in that you pick up the device and it simply happens. And there would seem to be a gap between those, which is why we see so many casual games on those devices. Um, so is there something about the mobile devices and what you're bringing in that is going to be completely different in terms of how you are connecting with the game? Um, are we talking about different types of interfaces? Or are we saying, hey, we are going to, legitimately use all the real estate that is afforded to us by the screen of this device and create a compelling core experience that you would expect from an actual home-powered console. Yeah, I actually think that gaming platforms evolve over time. I actually think one of the sort of favorite analogies is, if you think about first-person shooters, I grew up with first-person shooters, like literally for me, starting with Doom and Unreal Tournament and, and, and such. I thought no one could ever bring them to console. I just thought that that's yeah. a lost sure. cause. I don't understand why companies are trying to do it. Clearly, it will never feel as good on a dual stick controller as it does with your mouse and keyboard. As it turns out today, first person shooters are bigger on console because frankly, it was impossible until Halo figured out how to do it in a way that was felt rewarding on the console. Right. And that's what I feel is true also about touchscreens. Yes, there are many challenges with touchscreens. Yes, your fingers are kind of big, Yes, you need to have a very good technology engine to make it feel very fast, but you know what? If you work hard, like we have done together with our community of players, to work out how do we create controls that feel truly responsive, you can actually end up with a control scheme that gives you an enormous amount of freedom and precision because what you lose by having a slightly fatter finger than a mouse cursor, you actually win by now having multiple mouse pointers. You can use multiple fingers on the screen, which ultimately is far easier. So it's easier to do things like kiting and duking on a screen where, as opposed to sort of moving the mouse left and clicking, then moving the mouse back right and clicking left, right, left, right, left, right. Mm. You can just tap with two fingers. And that actually, fundamentally, once you get used to it, it is actually a control scheme that we believe will one day be looked at as being the natural successor to keyboard and mouse. Okay, so this is not much as, it kind of is being able to take these hardcore experiences and make them viable and accessible on the mobile platform. Or is it also about being able to shape the experience itself 
to fit what is afforded by the mobile device? Yeah, and it's a great question. I think it's a natural segue. So, the yes, it's true. There are some things that we can we feel do in some ways better than a PC on the screen itself by allowing you to both more intuitively control, but also in some cases doing executing more complicated things easier. Yeah. But what's really fundamentally unique is that for the first time you can now have access to a core gaming experience away from your PC. So right. you can have a LAN party with friends without lugging your gamer rig over to your friend's house. Mm -hmm. And that's amazing. Well over half of our players report meeting up with their friends at somebody's house or in, in, at, in just casually during the day and playing a game. The Vainglory game lasts about 20 to 25 minutes. Our average players play between 80 to 90 minutes per day. So like people play a lot, but they really play throughout the day with these sort of matches together with people. Because the most fun way of playing a MOBA is as a LAN party with friends. And it's yes. tough to do with your PC and you can do it easily with your touchscreen. So yes. that's one of the things that we think feel is totally unique. And of course, just a lot more people have touchscreens than yes. own PCs. Yes. So in some ways, setting that your core gaming free from having to be confined just in your PC and with your gaming rig is really what we're about. Right, now obviously you guys are working really hard, it sounds like, on the interface and you know, tearing down those barriers uh, that were keeping people, from, core gamers, from accessing. We know lots of casual gamers are accessing mobile, but how important, I, I know it's very important, but in your perspective, there also has to be an IP and an experience behind that. Tell us a little bit about what you're building, whatever you can, and also just where your uh, prior priorities lie in terms of building up an IP that is going to be able to facilitate something. You mentioned Halo changed the game on Xbox because of this, but it also had Master Chief, it had fun, it had a universe, all these things. Where is the emphasis on developing an IP that's going to showcase these controls and actually be the big thing that carries you forward? Yeah, so we are actually very very focused on the creative universe that we are creating. I always think it's a little bit self-indulgent of developers at an early growing stage to say that, yes, we are trying to create a big world with a big mythology and all that. But we do focus an awful lot on our heroes. So we think a lot about how do we, on the one hand, sort of, if you like, satisfy player fantasies about whether you want to play the mage or the brute, but on the other hand, bring a flair, a unique kind of um, a unique creator direction to the game. So the way we sometimes, in fact, some players have described our creator direction is it's like as if Quentin Tarantino directed a manga, kind of in the sense that we try to kind of, like our brute is not just a big barbarian with a hammer, it's actually a giant blind snow leopard with a an axe with a built-in jet engine. I was going to so guess like, that. Yeah. I was going to guess that. Nearly. <laughs> but in terms of but finding everything from the very core characters that we are creating all the way to the map and to the universe which we can bring to life in beautiful 1.3 million polygons through the technology engine that we have in place. All of that stuff is really important to us and in fact um, today for the first time we showcased our next hero Finn that is the first and the tankiest hero we've ever launched. And he's this giant lizard that is that has a, a, a large anchor that can hook in opponents but also is walking around with a pipe that blows bubbles. Soap bubbles. So nice. There you go. Yeah. So, uh, so we are very excited about the, the creative environment behind the game. And in fact, our creative director, formerly at Blizzard, previously has a lot of uh, experience in in actually in helping create a consistent but always intriguing universe that we can keep on expanding through our heroes. Obviously, one key factor for you. Last question. I'll let you go is in regards to building up the community around this game um, and around what you as a studio are trying to do and prove uh, with uh, mobile devices and touch controls. Talk a little bit about community services like Twitch, the online streaming movement, and how you're going to leverage that to try to gain momentum because word of mouth is ultimately the best you know, uh, marketing yeah. that you could have. No, that's right, absolutely. And we, we're all about the community from the start. We don't see our TV ads. It's kind of fun to see Samsung and HTC and Apple and others doing TV ads of the back of Glory, but we don't do any of that stuff ourselves. What's important to us is our players and helping empower our players to create content and to share that content with others. So just yesterday, we actually had an event at our offices with over 100 content creators who we, could, who we invited in, showed them all the new things that we are, that we are showcasing in, in, you know, in Glory in the next update. And in fact, we're giving the, all of them access to all of that content you know, more than a week before it will be available for the general public in such a way they can create all, that, all the content around it and frankly help build their mini streaming businesses or, or, um, or, or uh, um, VOD businesses on right. YouTube. The community is absolutely important to us. And one of the things that's been really fun has been to see Vainglory grow from 
literally nothing from a community perspective to a place where just this July, the World Invitationals had over one million views. Wow. We had over like nearly half a million unique viewers of Vainglory content just on Twitch in the, you know, in, in, the, in the month of July. And to us, that's just amazing. And we're just incredibly thankful to our content creator community, to all the streamers, all the YouTubers, um, all the folks who write articles, they are incredible websites, strategy guides, and other things. And we just, we couldn't be happier and prouder to be part of that community. And we always do everything we can to help build up uh, these influencers and these content creators to be stars inside of the game. Well, it doesn't sound like a super evil megacorp. Well, we dream of being one one day. It is such a, a world subtle dominance. strategy. It is a subtle strategy. All right, well, Christian, we appreciate it so much. Wonderful. Thanks for Thank taking you so the time much to stop by. Absolutely. Wonderful.